Now, it is a fact in the world of information storage and retrieval that some systems are not Kafka. Some say that's an unfortunate fact, but we all agree, at minimum, that it is true. And sometimes you'd like the data that are in those other systems to get into Kafka topics. And sometimes you'd like the data in Kafka topics to get into those systems. This is the job of Kafka Connect, Kafka's integration, API, and, and really subsystem. Connect is, on the one hand, an ecosystem of pluggable connectors. On the other hand, it's a client application. That is, to a Kafka cluster, Connect looks like a producer or a consumer or both. Because remember, everything that's not a broker is one of those things. So, ecosystem of pluggable connectors, client application. Let's dig into this. As a client application, Connect is a server process that runs on hardware independent of the Kafka brokers themselves. This is an application running outside the cluster. It is designed to be scalable and fault tolerant, meaning you can run not just one single Connect worker, but you can have a cluster of Connect workers, of, of individual uh, nodes, individual instances running the Connect process to share the load of moving data in and out of Kafka, between Kafka and, and these external systems. Connect also abstracts a lot of this data integration code proper away from the user, that user in this case being you, uh, and instead requires you just to write some JSON configuration to run a connector. So for example, this would be how you would stream data from Kafka into Elasticsearch. You'd use this little bit of JSON configuration to configure a connector. Would you write the code that subscribes to a topic, gets messages, uh, uses the Elastic API. No, you would not do any of that. That's the business you want to get out of. You want someone or some subset of the community to have written that Elasticsearch connector for you, simply deploy that connector to your Connect cluster, and then declaratively announce this is where the cluster is, this is the topic, any other parameters that might be involved in that sourcing or syncing of data. A Connect worker, which is one of these you know, nodes in the Connect cluster, runs one or more connectors. And connector kind of gets two different senses here also. A connector is a pluggable component that's responsible for interfacing with that external system. And in its simplest definition, a, a connector is a jar file with all of that, that JVM Connect code in it. So it's that component. Uh, connector also has a runtime sense. So when I've got that, that little snippet of JSON and I've posted that to the REST endpoint on the Connect cluster and said, okay, run this. Well, then that jar that's deployed there, that kind of physical connector becomes instantiated as a runtime connector. Uh, some key terms, I said these a moment ago, but to be precise, a source connector reads data from an external system and produces it to a Kafka topic. A sync connector subscribes to one or more Kafka topics, and then writes those messages, the messages that it, that it reads from Kafka, writes them to an external system. Each connector is either a source or a sync connector, but it's worthwhile to remember that the Kafka cluster only sees a producer or a consumer in either case. That's all you can be to Kafka. So if you're producing, that means you're a source connector. If you're consuming, that means you're a sync connector. One of the primary advantages of Connect is the gigantic ecosystem of connectors that someone else has written and maybe lots of people have deployed and tested. Now, writing the code that moves data to a cloud blob store or writes it to Elasticsearch or inserts records into a relational database or, or whatever, that's code that is, we'll say, unlikely to vary from one business to the next. Like Everybody does that in the same way. That does not differentiate you to write that code. Uh, likewise, reading from a relational database, getting messages from salesforce.com, a legacy HDFS file system or something like that. That's the same operation, no matter what sort of application does it. You can definitely write this code if it's fun and nobody's looking, but spending your time doing that doesn't add any kind of unique value to your customers or make your business more uniquely competitive. Uh, it's what we call undifferentiated code. And when you can avoid writing that kind of code, you should. And by the way, all of those examples of connectors that I just gave, those are the kinds of connectors that are available on the Confluent Hub, which is a curated connection of connectors of all sorts. And 
Importantly, of all kinds of licenses as well. Some of them are commercially licensed and maybe even really expensive. Uh, some can be used for free. Some have standard open source licenses. Some have community licenses. It's a variety of things there. And uh, the license is disclosed in every case. So you're able to see what you're getting. And in addition, Connect Hub exposes a search function so that you can search for the kind of connector you're looking for. And of course, uh, connectors don't need to come from the hub. It's nice, it's central, it's curated, it's searchable. There's a command line tool for downloading things from there and installing it into your uh, Kafka Connect instance. There's lots of convenient tooling around it, but you can just find them on GitHub or elsewhere. Someone could hand you a thumb drive in a parking lot that had a connector on it and you could build it and run it. And I'm sure that would be fine. Uh, there are other commercial connectors in the marketplace that aren't on Connect Hub and that you get through other means. This is really in the broadest sense an ecosystem. Connect offers an API, people code against that API. And if you can't find a connector on Connect Hub, on GitHub, generally out in the marketplace, handed to you on a thumb drive in a parking lot, you know, whatever your distribution mechanism is, uh, Connect's API that it exposes is frankly pretty friendly. There's not a lot to it. Uh, so you can pretty easily write your own. Uh, connector code, I've just made this case about how you definitely, no matter what, don't want to write this kind of code. Sometimes you have to, right? Maybe your thing uh, doesn't have a connector and you have to do it. And the difficulty, this point I want to make carefully, the difficulty of writing a connector is going to come in that external interface. So if that is painful for some reason, or if there's just something that's fundamentally mismatched about uh, event data and that interface, like that external thing is inherently synchronous somehow. I mean, there, there's various forms of impedance mismatch that can happen. There are various forms of unpleasant integration APIs in the world. So connectors can give you friction, but the connect API sort of thing, let me assure you, is, is really not that bad. And you know, when I talk about connect like this, it seems deceptively simple on the surface. Uh, and I've, I've certainly had folks ask me in person when I've been talking about this, you know, why would I use that? Why wouldn't I just write my own? And I say, <laughs> well, you'll learn. Uh, but, you know, you can kind of tell this is a fairly complex distributed system in its own right. And the value of the plugin ecosystem is difficult to overstate. So all those things, I mean, just to give you a quick idea, uh, say you're, you're reading from a relational database and uh, you know, you're keeping track of the last ID that you saw. Well, you need to put that last ID somewhere, right? You need to store that state. Where's that going to go? And what if your worker fails suddenly and a new worker comes up? Where is it going to go look to get that ID? There's this kind of distributed state management problem that even in a super trivial connector is obvious. And all these things are things that Connect has solved. It's provided this ecosystem. So all the usual suspects of interfacing that you're going to have to do, you're going to have at least one connector to choose from. So you definitely want to rely on uh, that community effect and just the existing functionality and scalability and fault tolerance that Connect gives you. Mm -hmm.